Okay, what's up everyone? Um, in this video, I'm gonna dive into some of the nice uh, bits of Snowflake Cortex, specifically um, anomaly detection. Personally, I'm a big fan of this um, because, you know, historically, what would you have had to do? You know, you probably had some data that was time series and, you know, you wanted to run anomaly detection on it, right? Pretty, pretty, pretty regular standard requirement. Um, you know, you're getting new data in every day, tell me if something looks kind of funky. But in order to do that, you obviously have to take the data out of Snowflake, run a machine learning model, um, and then send an alert, right? Seems like a bit overkill. Um, should probably just be able to do it in the warehouse, and now you can. Um, for me, however, the missing link is in how you orchestrate all of this. So in this example, I've got some sales data, which is daily. And, you know, in order to run anomaly detection on this in Snowflake, you know, you obviously need to train a model on part of this data. So, you know, maybe you train it up until the 17th and then you say, okay, based on the data looking like this until the 17th, are these anomalies? Um, and in order to do that in Snowflake, it's really simple. Um, you just run this query, which essentially selects your training data, throw in these parameters, and then run this SQL statement. Taking a while, but there you go. And then in order to do anomaly detection, you just call the model on the test data, which is basically the new data. In this case, I've made a table, but you don't have to do that. And you can see we get back this nice output. So we can see that Snowflake is telling us this is an anomaly. Um, however, if you try to, you know, do this from a open source workflow orchestration tool like Airflow, um, you know, you wouldn't get very much data. And, you know, this also wouldn't fail, right? Um, this is just a query that's getting back data. So you're not really doing data quality tests. Um, so if you do this in orchestra, it's, it's pretty cool. So what we're going to do is go ahead and check out this Snowflake data quality data pipeline. We can see we're already doing a schema check. Now we're going to add anomaly detection. So we select this, call it anomaly detection. Orchestra is going to handle all of the, uh, oh no, I need to share this tab instead. Okay, so we're going to head over to Orchestra and I'm going to show you how you build anomaly detection here. And it's a lot simpler than doing it in Snowflake. So I'm going to edit this Snowflake data quality pipeline. You can see we're already checking the schema of a table. I'm going to go down to the bottom and select Snowflake run anomaly detection. So if you remember that SQL statement from earlier that's fetching us the training data, I'm going to go ahead and get that now. The prediction is basically the same thing, but it's a different data set. We then need to add the name of the column we want to use for our timestamp. We want to add the name of the column we want to use for our, I guess, target. It's sort of like the, um, the variable. So in this case, sales. And then if you want to sort of play around with the connection or you want to add a series, um, you know, that's, that's really easy to do here. Um, in this case, uh, we are probably going to want uh, the store name as well. So I'm going to put store. Now, what Orchestra is going to do is it's essentially going to train this model, and then it's also going to um, call it. So this way, it ensures that the model 
is constantly getting retrained um, every time you want to run your anomaly detection, which is very powerful. Um, you know, you don't have to do that. Um, you know, you could have a separate pipeline in orchestra that's training the model. So maybe once a week is good enough. Um, and then you would have another, um, you know, Snowflake data quality test. That's essentially, um, you know, just calling the model. So in this case, you'd put your entire query here, select data quality test and run it that way. Cool. So let's save this and then run it and see what we get. Okay, so we can see uh, this Snowflake data quality uh, pipeline has run. So let's go check it out. Now we can see our schema validation has passed, which is good, but the anomaly detection has not. Um, and we can see that Orchestra has given us a helpful message, detected one anomaly in the data. Um, we can see the task parameters and we can also see the run parameters. Um, we can go ahead and debug in Snowflake if required and checking out the lineage, we can see exactly what's happened. So for the schema check, we've run this describe table command. We've created, so we've trained our data here um, to do anomaly detection. We've created a temporary table with the results. And then here we've, um, you know, we've, uh, I'm dying. And then here we flagged any anomalies. Now you'll notice that we also have credits, um, you know, data quality sometimes isn't, isn't cheap. Um, but the good thing about running, um, you know, these types of things in orchestra is, you know, we give you a view, which is very data quality centric. So, if I go ahead and check out our analytics page, and see what we've been doing over the last six hours, we can see that I've been implementing a few more data quality monitors. You can see the score is looking pretty good. Everything's passing. Um, and we can see how many credits I've been burning through. Diving a little deeper. Um, yeah, you just kind of have, kind of have everything you need here. Um, so yeah, that's an overview of, um, data quality and anomaly testing using Orchestra and Snowflake. Uh, you know, we're at getorchestra.io. Um, any questions, just come find me. Cheers.